Hello, I'm Ellie Foredu for Java, and this is uh, the second tutorial of Java Web. In this tutorial, we're going to do our first uh, servlet, and we're going to look at the structure of our web website according to the G2EE standards to carry out the deployment of our web application. The deployment would be the installation of an application. You only have to put a um, folder inside the folder web apps of Apache and respect the following structure, what we see here. Inside the folder of the application, we're going to put a directory called webinf in uppercase and with a hyphen, exactly as we see here. Inside WebInf, where there is going to be a folder classes, where we're going to have the compilated code of the classes, the dot class. There will be also a folder lib, where we're going to keep the dot jar of the application. If the application uses libraries, these libraries will be inside here. There will be also a configuration file inside Web that is going to be called web.xml. This configuration file is going to have which servers are going to be called when certain URL are called inside the site. It will, be a, it will make a mapping between the URL and the servers. It will also have the information with which classes are the servers implemented. We will see it later on. Let's start creating a servlet called first servlet. We're going to copy this code and we're going to go to Eclipse, new project, new Java project. We're going to call it first hyphen servlet, finish. And inside source, we're going to paste our code. We have an error here. It says that it, do, it doesn't know what is java.servlet. This java class is referring to a class, this one, which is not a, of java standard. These classes are in a library called servlet. We can import it to our project if we and double if we click on the right button with the mouse properties java build path we come here to libraries and we add external job we can get this job from uh, apache which is here from library we can see servlet api job Okay, here it is. Here we can see that we have a reference library here, servlet api.jar. Okay, this is our class for servlet, which is a servlet because it extends from HTTP servlet. We can see that we have override the do get method. When we call an HTTP server, we can do it through two methods, do get or do post. As I have explained in these tutorials here, web server or HTTP server. They are in Spanish, but they will be translated too. If we have a request to the get method, this do get method will be called and it will receive two objects as parameters, one of type HTTP server request and another one of the type HTTP server response. The request will have all the data of the call and the response will be used to send our response to the back to the browser. Here what we are doing is uh, from the object response we get an object print writer which we keep in a variable called out. And using this object, we're going to write all the things we want to send. Here we have a tag, HTML, HTML, which opens, a tag body, which opens. Today is in Spanish, and we create a new object 
date when we concatenate it with today is or yes, it will do a two string of this object, new date, and it will keep the date. Let's test something. Main, we're going to do a main, main method, and we're going to copy this so you can see something. Here, uh, we're going to put sys system dot out and here we are going to change it to print stream. What are we doing here? Remember that we always wrote system out dot print line to write things on the console? This is another way. We put the output of the console inside a variable called out and run it. Okay. Save, run us, Java application, and here we can see what we wanted to print, HTML, HTML, body, today is, and the date of today, which will be the two string of the date. It closes the body and the HTML. This is the text that when somebody calls to get, it will be kept in out and it will be sent back to the browser. Okay, let's close this and we can delete this main because it was just to show you this. We're going to delete this because we don't need it now. Now what we want to do is the compilation of this .java. We're going to want the .class. We're going to look for the place where we have kept this class. I'm going to properties here in resource. We're going to copy this. Okay, let's go here. Here we're going to write this. This is uh, our project. We're going to open another one and we are going to look for. Ate, web apps. Okay, so I'm going to copy the com folder. This one here. No, the one in bin. The com folder inside bin. Copy. And to deploy the dot class, we're going to put it inside the folder of first servlet inside web apps. What we've open here. We create a new folder web inf with uppercase a hyphen and inside it a folder called classes. And inside it we put what we've copied. Uh, the folder com with our dot class, which is the automatic compilation of this class. Eclipse does this compilation automatically, and if you have doubts, you can go here to properties, and here you can see where the Eclipse gets its source, where Eclipse gets it, the source code in source and where it put it in bin. What we did was to go to workspace inside bin and we have the compilation with all the directories which form the package and we've put it in the directory classes here. Okay let's go back to the web page. We can see here um, how is the structure. Webinf Classes, com, edu for Java, servlets, and the compilated class for servlets.class. It is important to highlight that the HTML go out of the web inf because the HTML files are static and can be accessed from outside directly, but the web inf folder and what is inside can't be accessed from the browser. Tomcat is the only one which can access inside here. Once we have done the deployment of the class, we have to configure the WebXML 
so that when somebody calls an URL, for example, first servlet, what time is it? It will respond with that servlet. To do this, we are going to add a new file in WebIM. New file web.xml. We are going to edit it and we are going to copy the code from here. This text, uh, we can see that it has a root tag, web app, which is the father element of the web XML, and it has a tag servlet that what indicates is to create a servlet called time servlet from this class. This class has to be in the folder classes or in a library inside Blip. What we do in servlet mapping is relate this servlet here that we just created with a URL. What time is it? This would have to work already. Let's try. We're going to start the server. We will go here. Start up. Once the server is running, we're going to write local host 8080 first servlet what time is it? Here you are. If we take a look at the source code of the page, we can see that it's the same as what we had written in the main. Is what the browser has received. The browser made a request, the server generated this code and it sent it back to the browser. The browser interpreted this code and it showed this. Okay, with this I end this tutorial. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye.